team from the ESS. So it was uh, really funny. <laughs> and um, uh, perhaps we can uh, hear it. And uh, you know, I was with, uh, I was uh, using my directional antenna. Uh, perhaps I can. Well, no. Uh, they are going to show you the, the antennas uh, later. But it's a homemade antenna, just with aluminium bars and uh, some uh, uh, some pieces uh, printed on a open source uh, 3D printer and uh, mounted on a camera tripod. So um, and I was uh, just following the the path in the sky of the ISS and calling them in you know a radio amateur uh, language, uh, this uh, international language and I was trying to call them okay okay you are talking to <laughs> to your friend but <laughs> please just uh, tell me that uh, you are hearing me and it was uh, really funny to to um, to hear uh, him uh, saying me uh, good morning in, in Spanish so we have the the track uh, perhaps talking about because uh, here nobody speaks Russian so <laughs> um, but, uh, on the screen in the screen so uh, I leave you so uh, what uh, are we seeing uh, how are you hello Good morning. Uh, we're just watching some images of the uh, zodiac constellations and uh, as they look right now from Gijón and uh, we what we're seeing here is uh, some I try to focus on, on a few satellites as they they cross the constellations from our point of view and making interesting combinations of uh, uh, conjunctions of uh, of, uh, of the satellites with the with the zodiac signs like right now we have a uh, radian crosses a radian tree we crossing um, Aries uh, Capricorn no Aries and um, down here we have uh, pieces, and in pieces there's a GPS satellite crossing the uh, constellation. That's probably a, an important conjunction. So um, I'm just gonna leave these images a little for a little while, so we can uh, um, admire them and imagine what uh, what relations can be done with the with the uh, with the importance of the, the influence of satellites in our lives and their relation to the um, uh, traditional astrology. Uh, we have a lot of satellites in Aquarian, which is uh, an interesting sign. We have Cosmos, uh, plenty of one, two, three Iridian satellites, which are used for um, telephone communications. Uh, there's a dummy satellite, dummy mass, who knows what that is? We have to check it out. Um, Cosmos. Uh, I mean, uh, there's a NOAA satellite crossing Capricorn right now. If you want to to grab their images, they are there. Sea site is getting into Capricorn as well.
and Dove is crossing Sagittarian. Dove is a satellite launched in the early 90s by a group of Brazilian um, amateur hams, and they used to have a, um, recordings of uh, peace, message, peace messages from children from all over the world, and it, uh, it was um, orbiting and sending these messages to the whole Earth for uh, while it worked. It's, it's not sending out messages anymore, but it, it can still be tracked. It's still up there in the sky, and uh, at this very moment here in Gijon, it's crossing the um, Sagittarius sign. Who next? Okay. <laughs> So we've seen a little bit of how they move in disguise, we've seen a little bit about the things we can get down. The big question is like, how do we do that? And now we, please, you're the performing now, Rennie, you're not behind the camera. Maria and Rennie, here they are, beautiful Maria and Rennie, are going to explain to us how do we make an antenna so that we can listen to a satellite. Go ahead, girls. Hey, Wahali, Wahali. We had the... Uh the, you know that already, that we had this ISS connection shortly today. We are listening to satellites now since a whole week. And even though you might think that's totally boring because they're there anyways, you know, there's thousands of them flying around and you could always connect to them, but we don't do it. So this is what we were doing the last few days. And Maria and I, we were going to, we're going to go further away now even. Among a lot of other things that we've been doing, we also built or tried building antennas. Now one thing is, you know, Maria, I, I don't know if I told you, there is, um, I think it's, I don't remember, I think it's a Central American idea, or maybe it's Indian, or it's from some other country. They say that the hair is an antenna, so that people should never cut their hair, they should l l let it grow. They don't have to comb it, you see, that works also if you don't comb it, but it's kind of, it is, connecting to the energies that are there and therefore it's it's no it's not the ground it's maybe the ground is the feet yeah but the hair is really how you connect but then of course as we are not listening so much at the moment to the natural satellites but more to the official artificial ones we decided to go with artificial or let's say um, man-made um, objects so what did we do well we actually worked on this Yagi, uh, which is quite good at uh, catching pirates from Brazil. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, this, uh, this model of antenna, well, you see a, a lot of models of antennas here. Uh, this was another one, another Yagi, that, uh, well, it's bigger, so it has more um, gain, more uh, directivity. I'm not sure of the English word. And this is another Yagi. And I guess this one that they just made, we didn't make this, but this one is actually quite good uh, for satellites because it has a different, I mean, it has vertical and horizontal polarization, while this one only has this, well, this will be the, the, uh, the element that is uh, with electricity. Uh, or the dipolo, dipole, I don't know. And these are the directive elements, and this is actually the reflector. Oh, no, well, I'm not sure now because this is not finished. But um, actually, I will get the finished one. And you see, actually, uh, when uh, these things first came out, well, the Jaggi antennas were invented by a guy called Dr. Jaggi, a Japanese guy, and actually um, he designed this as a radioactive weapon <laughs> originally <laughs> to kill mice. <laughs> and then, then the Americans, this was in 1926, the Americans uh, thought that actually this was very good for telecommunications. And the Japanese started to use it only in the Second World War when they, they found out that the other army was using their own antennas <laughs> to, to communicate within themselves. 
so <laughs> it's quite a crazy story. And uh, we did a lot of measurement with this. It was the metaphysics of uh, numbers. Yeah. So one thing is, of course, this is a lot about testing and trying out and listening. So we know that we need these technical devices to listen to the artificial satellites. And then there's, as you say, all these measurements. And we know that the certain wa wavelength also requires a certain uh, design length of these pieces, length of the, of the whole thing. But again, then there is things where you would say they can't actually really work. And then you go out in the world with them, in the real world, and they do work. Like this one has, let's say, um, if you would be a very bureaucratic mathematician, you would say, you will have to change that because you have to cut that. But if you are just a normal person, you would maybe just connect it and go out and try it. So one thing that is very important with all these things is always go out and try. So it's also not about having, I mean, of course, building things is almost very nice if you have the good tools because it's easier. But you can also do it with less perfect things. And try out because maybe you will listen to something the perfect ones will never hear. So the advice is always, don't worry if it doesn't, if it doesn't work. This is Samuel Beckett quote, um, ever tried, ever failed, um, no matter, try again, fail again, fail better. I really love that too also. So anyhow, we are doing a lot of this me me um, measuring precisely crunching our heads with these numbers yeah so that was the magic the metaphoric uh, the mystery the mythical part of the of the ma numbers uh -huh. yeah this is uh, for 240 uh, mega uh, megahertz and uh, this is actually half of the wavelength and this is a little bit bigger and i guess it's a logarithmical proportion uh, uh, this is a fourth wavelength, I think. Well, I'm, I should be, but I guess here is not. I'm not sure. Well, I don't know. And uh, I guess this uh, have a relation that is logarithmical. I think it should be, well, my, my guess, because I'm not totally, totally sure, but w for what I've been reading about, it sounds like uh, it has some relation to the, to the um, uh, how do you call it, the harmonics. You know, the wave harmonics, so, uh, you know, Pythagoras had to say something about that a uh, long time ago, and I guess, you know, mathematics are in the waves. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then there is also a really other beautiful model which we want to show you before we are uh, passing over to the next um, input, which is the one that I started calling omnipresent. This is, of course, not the right word. It's like omni... Um, now, I really forgot how it is, Omnidirectional, thank you, because of always using the wrong, like wrong, you know, what is right, what is wrong, who says how to call the things. But anyhow, you see this beautiful sculpture. If I had a garden, if I even had just a balcony, I would put it there. It's very beautiful. It has, um, it has four elements. Yeah, we were going to bring that to light now. It has four elements, and it's kind of, it's also, it's called an egg beater. Yeah, it's a little bit of, would be big eggs, but Anyhow, that would be the idea. And when you saw the, the photographs that we took at the beginning, when you saw the photographs from the weather that we took, they were taken with this type of antenna. Yeah, so it's this kind of watching, listening to uh, many frequencies at the same time. And I found that this is my, uh, this is my favorite. So, who is next? <laughs> something, something to say? Ah, the water ones. Oh, but the. Hmm. Can you tell something about the spiral? Well, I'm not uh, very sure about the spiral ones. Yeah. But uh, mm. the, big the, sp the spiral ones. Okay. Um, um, well, the. Yeah, yeah. This uh, you can go to you know to the fox hunting or in in UK or <laughs> uh, to horse racing or in UK. Okay. Um, um, well, these are uh, helical antennas that uh, well they are very, really good to um, for satellite uh, works because uh, well as you can see in a jaggy antenna. 
we have the elements uh, in uh, in a plane, and so uh, the um, the wave, the electromagnetic waves, uh, goes in a plane. Uh, the electric um, radiation in a plane and the magnetic uh, field uh, perpendicular to it. So, um, if you want to receive it uh, in a good way, uh, uh, the receiving antenna has to be polarized like the uh, emitting antenna. So, this is a problem in satel uh, with satellites uh, because they are up in the sky, going very fast, and perhaps rota rotating. So, if the antenna is rotating, you have a problem in ground per because you should be doing something like this, you know, for receiving it um, with uh, the best uh, quality. So, um, these antennas uh, are cir circular uh, polarized. So, it's something like uh, the, yeah, this is not, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's better. Um, so it's uh, something like uh, the magnetical and, um, and electrical fields are um, going, uh, yeah, rotating. And so uh, also in the receiving antenna, uh, if you have an uh, helical one, uh, it receives uh, these uh, two fields um, and it doesn't matter as, uh, what the, polarization, uh, the, the polarization is because it's circular. So, um, well, I think this one is for uh, 1.3 gigahertz and this one is for uh, 2.2 gigahertz. Uh, we were uh, using it to, to listen to some uh, other signals and, uh, well, they, they work. And this one <laughs> is not finished, but uh, and now it's less finished than uh, just uh, a moment ago. Uh, well, it, it's an antenna also for uh, weather uh, satellites. And it's, uh, well, for uh, the poles together uh, with um, this face in, uh, in, uh, of uh, 90 degrees between the two elements uh, and so uh, it works something like an omnidirectional antenna uh, and it's also circular uh, polarized so you can receive it uh, circular polarized signals in an omnidirectional way so it's also a really nice antenna but it's not finished yet so <laughs> we uh, didn't use uh, it One last. Uh, uh, there's two more. That, I mean, there would be much more. You see, when you start diving into antennas, it's kind of an endless, not maybe not endless, but you can go more into details. You can go into totally different frequency bands, or you can also go into totally different worlds. So one was, do you, maybe we, we, we take that out now. So stop. That's it. That's it, I think. So we have, there's this now like one long antenna that is connected to a very low frequency listening. I'm, I'm not going to switch it on now because it's going to be used as part of a performance in a few minutes, but it's just to show you, it's again another form. And this one, if I would imitate what you would hear with it when you, when you catch what, you, what this kind of low frequency is, what we think, and it's like the natural frequencies that are there. Yeah, it's nothing artificial in that one. It will go something like So you have to be really kind of slowing down. You have to be quiet yourself. You need a quiet surrounding. So the best really is to go outside, but not only outside as we did it now here in Laboral. We're just leaving the building and there is a little meadow and we go there, but it's rather really going, let's say on a mountain where you have less electrosmog and less electromagnetic fields from machines and light and all that kind of stuff. And then we can really start listening to that. So listening to satellites and to all sorts of waves actually also means to be outside a lot and to go searching for them. So it's also really good because it's a whole body experience. 
And anyhow, we are we have our own frequencies as well, yeah? and we our cells are emitting a certain frequency, and um, they can also we can be part of a whole like receiving circle or receiving cycle also. And then there is maybe one more we should talk about, which is the salt water. Do you want to talk about that? Then I bring my computer and show some of the of the sea ocean movies. I mean, I think Bruno should tell about it. <laughs> Bruno, tell us something about your antennas. <laughs> the water, the salty water antennas. Uh, uh, where is it? Hello? <laughs> um, no, I just want to say um, I got very interested about the uh, design of uh, antennas and, and how, and I found out a lot of uh, groups which are dedicated to, to, to building antennas and finding new materials. And I was uh, very charmed by this idea that uh, I read about that some people building antennas made of water and actually uh, salt water which is uh, very conductive no? so if you just uh, uh, have a, a, a stream a stream of a, a jet of, of, of salt water it works as an antenna so the, the problem is more like how to uh, hook up the wires to it and some, they found out that you could uh, have a, a ring around the this um, jet and uh, get the, um, the electromagnetic transmissions coming from it. So from the, these two months, we will be, I'll be here in the Laboral doing some research with these antennas and trying to build a fountain that will track satellites using this uh, water. I think it's a, a liquid, liquid, liquid and um, appealing concept. And we are, you know, as we are a collaborative situation, that means we just, it's like a huge pot and we throw in all knowledge that we have and all ideas that we have and we try out things. And when I heard about this what, this, what this salty water antenna idea, I thought, wow, I mean, here is the sea. You know, I live in Austria. For me, the sea is always like, <gasps> I want to go there. So I went there to f maybe find spots where you could actually make some, I would, I would call them tide antennas so when there's enough water coming with a wave yeah one wave triggering another wave you can partly maybe listen to the ocean or to the submarines or to something i don't know but it's kind of it's built on the idea and the, the information that you gave to me so this is um one possibility i'm going to try to uh, see if this is can work somehow um yeah you take it that's good that's just it's uh, here at the seaside so it's in in Gijon. There's really wonderful places and there's some natural tubes that came because the, the, the sea, the ocean, the waves are eating out of, of all sorts of material. So they make little holes and through these holes we could just, we could just put some uh, metal there and then this metal could be like the transmitter for the, yeah, for the antennas, for the signals. So I would suggest we go on with the next topic of the evening, which is Luca. Hello. Uh, hello, everybody there. I'm Luca from a place between Africa and Europe that is called Sicily, that is not Europe, actually, and it's not Africa, actually. It's uh, nowhere in some place in Mediterranean Sea. So I, I like to play with data, mm, whatever kind of data audio data, uh, video data, and satellite data. This was my first time working on doing some stuff with this kind of data. And I was very cur curious. And here I met a lot of people like me interesting, interested to satellite things. And with someone here, Raquel, that actually is not there, but she worked with me, we tried to, to uh, make a map of the activities here. Actually, um, we try to, to visualize the data that we recorded from the satellites that we captured to visualize in a geographical map, but using sound. Um, the, the, the pretty things for, for us 
uh, is try to, to make some kind of cartographical words with this data, but with not a, with a cartographical tool. In this case, as you can see in the, in the screen, if uh, you see, uh, we used pure data that is a graphical programming language and we use it as a cartographic tool just to visualize on the screen the position of the satellite during our capturing. So now I, I will launch the, the map. I will show you more or less the three satellites that I captured with uh, all, all, all the, that we captured here. They are not all the satellites that we captured during these days. Are just few like mom uh, as example but they can you give me an idea of the sound and the data that we worked with As can you see, the little boats that are moving on the map are graphical objects that represent code. Uh, this is from IS, the International uh, Space uh, Station. We, the first day we, we got a brief talk between this, the Italian man that is in the east and another Italian that from Italy was trying to get in, to in contact with them. And they were talking, they were talking about stupid stuff like the heat, the quality of the heat, of the food and uh, which kind of museum units they, they are using there and th this stuff, just blah, blah, blah. As, as you can hear, there is a lot of noise. That it's, at, at the first, if you are not used to, it could be very, very annoying. But it's very poetic. There is an inner sound inside this noise. And when you used to hear it, you you, 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 you you discover an, a, a new dimension of sound, a new way to, to, to hear that sound. The man was just invited to come in Italy when his mission finished. So he said, yeah, it will be a pleasure for me to come there and visit you. So this was the first attempt to, to, to play with this data, to make something. We, we recorded a lot of sounds and I don't have all. This was just an example. Then mm, another, an, another example, another little game I try to, to make in these days is um, playing with, with this stuff. Uh, René presented before, it's like a natural radio device. It's used, you know, uh, we use it to get natural radio waves. And I try to visualize the data and the sound that this device produces. So um, in a moment, you will see.
So this little cube represents a wave. And let's let's play. When he found more activities, he, 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 he threw more cubes, and the cubes moves more or less depending of the uh, frequency of this this wave.
bien. <risa> excelente, excelente, excelente. Bueno, eh, soy Josian y me gustaría, voy a intentar explicar eh, cuál es la importancia de, de las órbitas geoestacionarias y después, aprovechando que están aquí Alejo y Joana, leeremos la declaración de Bogotá y, y la reinterpretación que ellos hicieron hace un año, do, tres años de, de esa propia declaración. Eh, bueno, aunque no sea un experto en telecomunicaciones, una órbita geoestacionaria es, una, es aquella que describe de manera circular un, un objeto, un satélite, a lo largo de, del ecuador. Y, y, y bueno, son importantes porque son la, a través de ellas son donde, en el posicionamiento de esos satélites es como nos permiten subir información y hacer también que los satélites se, com, se comuniquen entre ellos, permitiendo hacer difusión entre grupos de satélites y hacer un broadcast. Eh, las órbitas geostacionarias eh, mmm, son muy importantes porque cada satélite eh, ocupa una posición a lo largo de la Tierra y ocupa también una frecuencia. En el año 67, los países adscritos a la, a la Organización de las Naciones Unidas acordaron que una, una órbita geostacionaria era un bien común y que podía ser explotado por todos los países. Pero claro, ahora yo os hago una pregunta. Eh, en el 67... ¿Cuál grupo de países podía explotar a una órbita geostacionaria? Os doy tres opciones. A, Italia, Somalia y Luxemburgo. B, Estados Unidos y la Unión Soviética. Y C, Francia, Suecia y Canadá. ¿Quién creéis? Pues evidentemente la declaración del 67 lo que hizo fue propiciar que solo los países que realmente tenían el potencial para hacerlo pudieran explotarla de una manera eh, libre. Todo esto luego se va complicando, la Organización de las Naciones Unidas sí que saca en esa década otras dos declaraciones en las que intenta eh, emitir resoluciones donde, como la utilización del espacio ultraterrestre, eh, donde afirmaban que el uso del espacio no puede ser objeto de los minos particulares, pero claro, eh, evidentemente los países que también podían poner órbitas, en, en, satélites en órbita, también estaban en el Consejo Nacional eh, del, del, de la ONU en la, mesa de, en la mesa con lo que ante esa situación en el año 76 se reúnen aquellos países que estando en la órbita del Ecuador eh, tienen jurisdicción o, o, o te, podrían eh, tener acceso a, a esa, al, al espacio por donde están circulando los satélites que son Brasil, Congo, Ecuador, Indonesia Uganda, Kenia y Colombia que están ubicadas sobre el paralelo de Ecuador y declararon que el espacio ultraterrestre hacía parte de su territorio, por lo que combinaban a las demás naciones a pedir que, que pudieran hacer una autoridad por el, sobre el mismo o a, a que eh, al menos eso fuese un bien que pudiera, al que pudiera acceder todo el mundo. Por supuesto, este tipo de, de, de declaración luego no fue muy seguida. Eh, eh, me gustaría leer esta declaración y a la vez, eh, Joana. Eh, leerá el, la declaración, la, la revisión que se hizo hace tres años y, y que pone al día toda esta eh, idea de que las órbitas geostacionarias son un bien común y que debemos tener acceso a ellas, explotarlo, experimentarlo y poder acceder en igualdad de condiciones. Declaración de la primera reunión de los países ecuatoriales, 3 de diciembre de 1976. Los abajo firmantes, todos representantes de los estados que cruza la línea del Ecuador, se reunieron en Bogotá, República de Colombia, el 20, del 29 al 3 de diciembre del 76, con el propósito de estudiar la órbita geostacionaria que corresponde y que, como lo hacen igualmente según sus leyes internacionales, las extensiones marítimas y de territorio insular. Todas consideradas como reconocidos recursos naturales. Tras un intercambio de información y haber estudiado en detalles las diferentes técnicas jurídicas 
políticas y aspectos implicados en el ejercicio de la soberanía nacional de los estados adyacentes a la órbita, hemos llegado a las siguientes conclusiones. La órbita geostacionaria es un recurso natural. La órbita geostacionaria es una órbita circular en el plano ecuatorial, que en el periodo de revolución sideral del satélite es igual al periodo de rotación sideral de la Tierra, y el satélite se mueve en la misma dirección de la rotación de la Tierra. Cuando un satélite describe esta órbita, se dice que es geostacionaria. Tal satélite parece ser estacionario en el cielo, visto desde la Tierra, y se fija en el cénit de un determinado punto del ecuador. Esta órbita se encuentra en una distancia aproximada de 35.871 kilómetros sobre la Tierra. Los países ecuatoriales declaran que la órbita sincrónica geostacionaria es un hecho físico vinculado a la realidad de, su planeta, de nuestro planeta, ya que su existencia depende exclusivamente de su relación con fenómenos gravitatorios causados por la Tierra y es por eso que no debe ser considerado parte del espacio ultraterrestre. Por lo tanto, los segmentos de la órbita sincrónica geostacionaria son parte del territorio sobre los estados ecuatoriales sobre el cual se ejerce su soberanía. La órbita geostacionaria es un recurso natural escaso, cuya importancia y valor aumentará rápidamente junto con el desarrollo de la tecnología espacial y la creciente necesidad de comunicación. Los países ecuatoriales reunidos en Bogotá hemos decidido proclamar y defender en nombre de sus pueblos la existencia de su soberanía sobre este recurso natural. La órbita gestacionaria representa una única instalación que solo puede ofrecerse para servicios de telecomunicaciones y otros usos que requieran los satélites gestacionarios. Las frecuencias y la órbita de los satélites gestacionarios son recursos naturales limitados. El avance tecnológico ha provocado un aumento continuo del número de satélites que utilizan esta órbita, por lo que podría dar lugar a una saturación en un futuro próximo. Las frecuencias, las soluciones, los países, la existencia de su soberanía, de sus pueblos, un futuro próximo, una saturación de tú. Esta órbita de sus pueblos, los países, los países, que las frecuencias y son recursos, las frecuencias de mi corazón. En el pueblo satélite, la frecuencia estacionaria, sincrónica, esta órbita de sus pueblos, los países, los países, que las frecuencias y son recursos, las frecuencias de mi corazón. 
en un pueblo satélite, la frecuencia estacionaria, sincrónica, podemos ver tanto. general talking. <clears throat> so I'm just going to um, um, I'm just going to describe some satellites. Stereo are two satellites exactly the same and they were built together in the same room and then they were put into the top of a rocket and launched into space. And when they got into orbit They came out of the rocket, and the two little spacecraft that had been together for the last three years being built and were identical and had never been apart, gradually drifted apart from each other. And they started to move around the sun. And when they got to a certain place, they were like two eyes, and they started to look at the sun like we look at things. And so everybody was very interested in them because they were taking three-dimensional stereo images of the sun for the first time. But those two stereo satellites are still there and everybody is very happy that they're there. But after some years, the money is going to run out and the satellites will still be there for 22 years and they'll carry on orbiting around the sun. And in 12 years' time, they'll meet on the other side of the sun. What were they, will they think of each other then? Pues vamos a estamos streameando ahora mismo. We are now streaming. Yeah, we are now streaming to Moscow, Russia. We're very happy of this because we're remembering the 50 years of Yuri Gagarin. We're remembering all the beginnings of the real, yeah, of the real exploration of space began uh, in the Russia. And I've just asked them to switch their image on, but we're kind of waiting. He, and he says, look at this, this is very exciting to have in my Skype a Cyrillic, Cyrillic, uh, Cyrillic name. Uh, Skype, for, uh, just to make clear to everybody, uh, if you didn't know already, has been bought by Microsoft. So please, we are now looking for alternatives to Skype uh, in order to escape the evil empire. Or was it Google that was the evil empire? <laughs> El ojo que todo lo ve. Al ojo que todo lo ve. Pues mientras que esperamos esto, vamos a seguir con otra cosa, ¿no? Un poco de música, chavales. ¿Qué tenéis aquí? ¿Máquinas? ¿Qué máquinas tenéis? Cuéntenos. ¿Qué máquinas tenéis? Tenemos unos sintetizadores analógicos y un, un sintet modular ahí. Do it yourself. <risa> Dale ahí. La foto es que se corta. ¿Y esto quién lo construyó? Esto entre nosotros. Lo... Bueno, este, este lo ha construido Víctor. Es anónimo. Pero a ver, que él te cuenta. Nada. Ya, yeah, this is a modular synth homemade, so there's different modules made with the Befaco team from Barcelona. And the other things are just some filters, some field recordings we have been doing during this uh, week. So now we will just start to play everything like together and just make some some noise of these things. Maybe we can introduce or yeah. Move un poco y le enseñamos el. Este es el este es el Lizer. Ah, this is the Lizer effect sound. Uh, do it yourself for delay, reverse and uh, distortion effects. Um, and the designer is Pablo Gallo. Gallo Lazer. Hi. <laughs> 
Yes, it is a spe uh, made for industrial electronic music, and the combination of effects is uh, one combination that uh, is useful for, useful for me. Uh, it has uh, an Arduino based bit cruiser, uh, uh, an Ampeg Scrambler clone. Eh, food, eh, Germanium Food eh, eh, Delayed to based on PT2399 chip and an, Ar an Arduino Rever eh, base, eh, based on a design from KHM3, isn't it? Eh, <laughs> I, I don't remember well the <laughs> link. <laughs> Vale, pues estamos aquí, no sé si vamos a pasar de Moscú y pasar al próximo cosa que es el Lord Epsilon, ¿no? ¿Ya? Lord Epsilon, ¿estás listo con tu dongle? Te paso el, el Uvigia. Vamos a esperar cuando Moscú están listos y vamos a pasar al Lord Epsilon, que nos va a contar unas cosas. Sí, puedes girar hacia ahí. Vamos a darle un poco de luz al Epsilon. Y pues él nos va a contar. Ahí está. Mira, está ahí su maravilloso fondo de pantalla, que siempre con tanto estilo. Y Epsilon, cuéntenos. Ok. Uh, yes, I go to talk very fast about uh, one machine, that is the dongle, uh, Funcube, that is a ground radio station. Uh, that, uh, yeah, if you can uh, come here, it's better. We can see the, the image of the website. Uh, yes, it's a, a grand radio station that is USB, uh, have a frequency of 64 megahertz and uh, 1,700 uh, uh, megahertz, so it's a good bandwidth for uh, try some things with uh, satellites. Uh, the good thing uh, is that uh, there is not use uh, some drivers. Uh, you can uh, use this uh, dongle uh, with uh, Windows, with Linux, and uh, with Macintosh. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a, a very cheaper uh, thing. Uh, the project uh, comes because uh, there is some uh, people that want to launch a satellite, and uh, they, uh, for ed educational purpose, and they uh, create uh, this uh, little uh, uh, USB to f uh, take funds. No, uh, this is the the, the thing. Uh, it's a little USB, more or less it's like uh, uh, 80 dollars, like say 60 euros, something you can order in the website. Uh, it's interesting the schema, uh, I don't know if uh, you can see this uh, schema. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, uh, very easy, you know, you have your laptop you, uh, connected to the internet and with the phone Google you directly can uh, take the, the, the uh, signals from the satellites. Uh, yes, uh, this uh, thing uh, uh, is very easy to, to uh, yeah, to create this. Uh, uh, pigtail antenna. That's it, uh, USB. So let's uh, plug in. So yeah, we have a good uh, receptor now. And the idea is like uh, we need uh, to uh, search uh, for the um, uh, satellites. For that, uh, we will use a, a software that is uh, Jpredict that uh, you saw before. Uh, this uh, Jpredict. Uh, yeah, uh, we can launch it uh, from here. Okay, this uh, Jpredict software, uh -huh, you can see here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, this is the software. Um, yeah. This is the second part of this uh, thing. So we have the receptor, we have the software. This is a tracker for satellites is uh, in the repositories, no? Uh, all is uh, Debian here. This uh, Jpredict, uh, we have put the base station that we are, that it's this uh, laboral, and we can uh, take uh, data directly and uh, uh, know uh, the range of, uh, of uh, usability of the satellites. We can track the, the the places that they will stay, no? So we can predict exactly the hour, no? To stay uh, over here. So, yeah, let's try to see uh, something with one satellite. In this case, uh, yeah, we go to see a military satellite. Uh, mm -hmm. That is... Uh, oh, I can't see what this. Uh -huh. 
So yeah, for example, this, no, you have uh, here uh, the data about uh, the satellite. And uh, the idea, if, if we want to track, uh, we have the, the controller. In this case, uh, is the radio control, is our uh, fun dangle. And uh, yeah, this is the, the dangle. This is the target, and in this case, is a satellite of uh, USA uh, military, call it uh, Cosmos, that it uh, will pass uh, from here uh, in one hour, uh, more or less, no? like near here. Uh, yeah, let's see, we can see here the ground track. So, yeah, it's the, he passed a very long distance, but uh, have a uh, very high range. And, uh, yeah, uh, with this, we can track it. We have here the time, uh, the time step to, to enter in, the, in our uh, zone, you know, to, to pass. We have the radio bandwidth in kilohertz, so we can connect with uh, a radio, with a, a radio receptor to listen and to see some graphical. And this is the third part, no? that it's uh, the GNU radio. Uh, we installed this uh, GNU radio in a Debian 64 bits, a little fight with uh, all the things because uh, yeah it's a little difficult but uh, uh, yeah in a moment uh, you can see that uh, we have yeah now connected no the dangle uh, taking the signal waiting for the new satellite and uh, yeah we go to launch this but uh, it's Okay, so this um, um, junior radio. Okay, I don't see. I don't show you the different uh, websites. Uh, this is the website of uh, the Genio Radio project. That uh, yeah, uh, it's, uh, you can uh, see that they have uh, a lot of documentation, and okay, uh, we go to launch. Uh, remember to launch like sudo. Okay, let's see. Take out this. Okay, this is the the software, the Genu Radio. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, yeah, it's very easy. Uh, it's like a. Uh, a GOE, no, that the name is co uh, Companion, and uh, the good thing is like, uh, yeah, it's like a uh, useful like uh, this pure data, so you can uh, load the modules and uh, put directly on the on the screen. We have here this uh, Funk Dangle source. We go to create, a, yeah, a directly a connection to see how it works. Uh -huh. And uh, some visualization that uh, it's the waterfall, for example, and uh, this scope. Okay, we have all, uh, you see this is the source of the device, that is the Funkube dongle source. Uh, for use, it's like uh, this pure data, so you can uh, yeah, double click. And uh, we go to out here out here and uh, yeah we go to generate the script and I go to launch and uh, yeah that's it and now you have uh, some sound and you can listen uh, some sounds and uh, you can see the two uh, class of uh, the visualizations of data one is a waterfall plot and uh, the other is a scrub part. As you can see, the data visualization of the and the sound. Uh, all this free software, uh, you're welcome, and uh, I don't know, thanks. Gracias.
Estamos Mosco Gijón, yo. Hello Daria, can you hear us there? Can you hear us, Daria? Hello Daria, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Hello Daria, I can't hear you. I can't hear you, my dear. Where are you? Hello. Hello. This is Microsoft for you, huh, guys. Huh? <laughs> Enter Brio. We're going to put a Brio here, so we try to see something like that. I can see it quite well on my screen, but as you know, Macintosh always comes out much darker. So uh, what's going on here then? Yeah, Can we hear you guys, please? Daria, what's happening here? Are we going to jump Moscow again? We can see you. I can, maybe you can put the camera onto this screen where you can see it better. Or maybe we can actually use, uh, no, let's use uh, Joanna. Can you bring your camera around? No, yo estoy bien, eh? Todo bien aquí. No estoy recibiendo nada de Moscú. ¿Qué pasa, George, Jorge? Daria. Daria, can you hear me? Smile, please. I like that, yes. Okay, well, we're going to play, continue playing some music and things, and then we'll carry on setting things up together. Uh, with Jorge, no? With George, huh? and see what's happening with your microphones, okay? And so we're going to carry on. So you know, we have 30 people listening in the stream right now. That's including you. So we're like, all probably all together, we're like 90 people now in this experience, Daria. And I'm very happy, Poheli, to all you people in Moscow. We are so happy to be uh, in connection with you guys. For us, it's an enormous honor and an enormous pleasure. And uh, we just want to like just give a little spin around the room to see uh, here we are in Gijón in Spain. It's a very remote area. You maybe saw on the map before. Daria can tell you about it. And we are just so excited to be in a real big city like, uh, like Moscow. You know, we're so just, just so excited really, no? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so now we're going to carry on with uh, a little bit of talk about the famous balloon. This is uh, David Peyo. He's going to now tell us about the balloon. We have here set up a table. We have the tables here set up, if somebody can move that camera around. 
And uh, we're going to explain a little bit about what we're going to be doing with the balloon and uh, so, uh, above all, weighing things, no, David? Okay. Um, this uh, heap of stuff here. From the beginning. From the beginning. So start from the, we're ah, okay, starting from okay. the beginning. We have a uh, suborbital thing that's free hardware, free okay, software. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Um, in uh, July, we are launching um, uh, this um, prototype of a um, uh, stratospheric uh, laboratory. Um, we are launching a um, high altitude uh, balloon uh, with um, uh, well, a uh, lot of stuff we want to, to put in it. Uh, here, um, we have this uh, stuff that we are uh, waiting it uh, to see if the the balloon uh, can uh, lift it. Uh, we can just um, send like uh, two kilograms with the balloon we are going to use. So uh, we have to be careful with uh, what uh, we put in it. Um, well, I can show you um, uh, things we are waiting. Uh, well, this will be the antenna for our radio beacon. Uh, the balloon will be sending its nickname in uh, Morse code, so uh, we can uh, follow it with a, a radio receiver and um, and also um, try to find it when it hits uh, ground. Because uh, well, the balloon will go uh, up uh, to. Uh, something like uh, 35 or 38 uh, kilometers. Um, then the balloon uh, bursts and uh, it will uh, come down uh, with a parachute. And, um, and well, uh, we, can, uh, we need to find where uh, um, it will end. Uh, so, um, well, for that, uh, we have an Arduino here and this Arduino, it's, uh, it has um, a GPS uh, shield and also a GPRS uh, shield. So we can uh, receive uh, uh, the um, position from uh, the GPS uh, network. Uh, so we will uh, receive the coordinates um, of the balloon. And uh, then uh, it will send the coordinates uh, with a text message uh, to one of our cell phones. So, uh, for example, it's uh, five minutes, uh, the balloon will send us a text with uh, its coordinates. So we can track it, and well, coordinates and also altitude, so we can um, make a graph of uh, his uh, path in the sky. Um, so for that we need uh, this Arduino with the GPS and GPRS module and the antennas for GPS and GPRS. And well, these are long wires, but uh, we will um, use uh, uh, shorter ones uh, for the end uh, prototype. Uh, here we have a sports uh, camera. That it's really nice because it's in a um, um, watertight uh, enclosure, so uh, it will uh, work uh, underwater, but uh, also um, uh, with a low pressure and, and uh, things we are going to to find at uh, 35 kilometers up. Um, here, this. Little little thing. It's the beacon transmitter. Uh, it's a transmitter for a uh, um, 432, 33 megahertz. Uh, it's in the radio amateur band. So the beacon will uh, be uh, also sending my um, my uh, radio um, amateur uh, nick because uh, it. Uh, has to be that way. Um, well, the camera. Uh, and this is one of the experiments we are going to, to send in the balloon. This is the an, uh, VLF uh, receiver. 
So uh, we want to try um, to listen, well, to record uh, uh, natural radio up in the in the sky. Uh, so um, well, for this, uh, we'll uh, as uh, um, some of my um, colleagues uh, were uh, taking before me. Uh, you will need a really long uh, antenna, but. Uh, it's not a problem when you are uh, 30 kilometers in the sky, just a long wire uh, <laughs> going uh, down um, the balloon. So, uh, well, we, we also need to, to decide uh, what uh, other experiments or things uh, uh, we want uh, to send, but, uh, well, uh, of course, we will be putting uh, temperature, pressure sensor, something like that, and uh, audio recordings to see uh, how the um, the winds are, uh, are at uh, high altitude, and, um, well, uh, we can also send messages or uh, or um, send things into the this uh, short uh, journey, and uh, um, well, uh, the thing is, uh, well, inside here there is also the battery, very important when you are <laughs> uh, that high, and perhaps we are also um, using a solar cell. Um, and uh, yeah, and also, of course, we are uh, putting some uh, messages in the in the box. Uh, so if uh, some uh, other people fi find uh, the the probe uh, before us, uh, uh, perhaps can call a telephone or something like that. And uh, well, we have a lot of work to do <laughs> to put all this stuff inside and um, be sure that it uh, weighs uh, less than two kilograms and that everything is working perfectly before we send uh, it into uh, a stratosphere and we lose it. Uh, what? Okay. <laughs> and um, well, um, the the basic system it's uh, just uh, a um, high altitude balloon with helium and um, we will uh, just uh, let it uh, go uh, into the sky uh, the um, before the balloon the, there will be a parachute so when the balloon uh, bursts because the the pressure uh, goes uh, very low uh, the balloon will uh, increase its size uh, and uh, uh, it will um, uh, burst, uh, I don't know, uh, in uh, somewhere between uh, 30 and 38 kilometers, something like that. So the parachute will uh, open instantly. So uh, it's a very basic uh, system, but uh, it's uh, really, really ball. Um, okay, uh, <laughs> right now we are going to put our names on the satellite, on the on the box, on the outside of the box. But uh, um, just uh, names, messages, and uh, whatever do you want to to put on it. Well, uh, I have to warn you: this uh, is not the final. Enclosure because uh, we need to put uh, some stuff there, but uh, perhaps you can uh, send us your messages written now uh, uh, w uh, before the launch, and we stick to to the final enclosure. So we are uh, right. What do you want right now? So we can uh, have this prototype uh, ready. Uh, let's do it. Yeah, I put all this. Oh uh, no, this was the the bomb, so I'm not showing it. <laughs> um, so it's your turn. Music plays. Uh...
And uh, Pedro, are you listening to us now? I, I want you to hear to our artists what are their works, so they can describe you what they are doing now, okay? Yes, so I want to introduce you to one of the artists, he's Vadim Smartin. Uh, hello, do you see me? Ah, yes, uh, hello guys, hello. Uh, uh, I'm Vadim, and uh, I'm presenting here uh, my new installation uh, that's called uh, Natural Humility. Uh, Do you hear us, guys? Do you hear us? It's uh, very nice to hear. Sorry. Because we have a lot of noise, Pedro. Sorry, because we have a lot of people today. It's like uh, 1,000 people for our small lab. <laughs> and uh, that's why we can't switch off all the sound. Do you no, hear we, we sound? love it. We love it, Daria. Yeah, we love it. We love it. Yeah, please carry on speaking. We are enjoying very much your presence. <laughs> so you can see some words. So George, can we move? Can we move to the work of Vadim? Yes. <laughs> Guys, we can show you our ex exhibition. It's for 
position space, but in two minutes. Now have talk, okay? Okay, but Dario, we only have 20 minutes more here, you know, so let's make it quick, okay? Okay. okay. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I will describe uh, what is in this room. Uh, so many people waiting to enter it. Uh, but uh, um, uh, uh, just um, five. This is my installation. Uh, that's called natural humidity. Uh, this, is, this is about uh, latest uh, Japanese uh, tsunami wave, and uh, it's great. Uh, from data uh, that collected from this uh, atmospheric uh, phenomenon. Uh, so I take uh, 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 a screen from NOAA, uh, a website uh, where uh, all data about uh, atmospheric and the seismic uh, phenomena are published. Uh, sorry for uh, his English. Uh, and uh, uh, people that uh, when they enter this room uh, can interact uh, with uh, this data. Uh, uh, I'm programming uh, in interactive installation where uh, uh, people will uh, see with tsunami uh, uh, when uh, they move uh, from one side to another, uh, like me, uh, they are creating a wave, a wave of data. And this data is uh, processed in VVVV, and then uh, this tsunami is uh, seen to people. Uh, when people standing like me, uh, tsunami d uh, do something like. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but when uh, they move from one side to another, uh, tsunami uh, becomes like a uh, cat. Uh, this is uh, it become very organic. Yeah, we like it a lot. Yeah. We'll, it's, it's not very spatial, but yeah, it's good. Nice, nice. <laughs> More terrenal, no? But hey, it's all, to, it's all, all one cosmos. All one cosmos. And now, while it's easy, he's also an artist. He's making a today. Yeah, the next one, please. Let's go fast, Daria. <laughs> Hello. Start uh, 11. Uh, Dasha will. Okay, I will introduce Vala. Okay, look, uh, what we are doing today is about. Uh, uh, Space sentiments and Vali's performance is very, uh, in a sense of provocative. It's the name is passive protest. Do you understand me? So passive protest. Passive protest. So people will yes. sit and listen to the music, but in the same time, is it funny? No, it's it's delicious. We love it very much. We like it very much. Please continue. So all people will sit and they will uh, listen to the music, like they expect to hear something. But while they are not ex uh, not receiving any sound, they will think what to do. Actually, the sound appears as a reaction of uh, any starting sound. So when the sound appears in the space, uh, they start, for example, to clap or the arms. Pedro, can I see you? <laughs> okay. Uh, so the idea is that the sound appears as a reaction to one's uh, sound. Can you understand this? But I never saw it. So it was who crashed it? 
Uh, can everyone let's like come close around the earth? We have to each one of you please come close. And we have to choose a name here. For that is uh Tarkar for uh Nuria. Um, um Bruno, Cynthia. Vamos a venir aquí a escoger. Estos son los nombres de todos los satélites que están ahora mismo percutando a lo de la Tierra. Al menos los participantes de Orbitando los Satélites, público, estáis bienvenidos a juntar en el juego. Aquí son los nombres de los satélites circulando ahora mismo a lo de la Tierra. Entonces tenéis que escoger uno de estos números, uno de estos nombres, y hacer tu 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 satélite digamos entonces podéis ahí escoger uno que os gusta y vamos aquí aquí está la tierra entonces vamos a empezar a girar alrededor de la tierra Ahí puedes ir leyendo los nombres, os pongo un poco más de luz. Yeah, what you have to do now is you look at the names of the satellites, you choose one that you like, and then you will be that satellite circulating around the globe. So then we'll just start around the Earth, if that seems okay with you. Because uh, you rotate around, unless they're you ask to Joanna, uh, you ask if it's geostationary or not, she will tell you if you stay in this. But if it's geostationary, then you have to follow exactly the movement of the Earth. Actually, it's quite difficult here, Joanna. Have you tried this yourself? Because it moves in a way that's difficult to... If you're geostationary, how, how, you, how should you move here if you're geostationary? Ah, if you're geostationary, you move across it. Exactly, so you have to stay at the same place. Right? That's geostationary. And actually, they're all geostationary, right? Are they? No, you need to know the year you were launched so that we can do this historically with the first one. So please find out you're a geostationary orbit. It means that you're at 36,000 kilometers from the Earth. Look at that. You look for the letters G-E-O. It means geostationary. And then you find out your name. You need to know your name. And then you need to know the year you were launched. And you need to know your purpose. Wait, what is it you're doing in the geostationary orbit? Are you more dancing? Are you more reading books? Are you like watching the skies? What are you doing? So, un poco de luz en las satelitos, por favor. Lucky numero. Number 586, Lockheed Martin Commercial Space Systems from, from USA, Baikonur, launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in the year 2000 and it's a direct to home voice video and data transmission in India, China and Philippines. 24 C band, 24 Ku band transponders. Okay, so I need to stay above the Philippines then, right? Yeah, Joanna? I'm going to do that, so I'll pass that on to the next person who's choosing. Atlantic bird, one, one or two, one. That's one, yes, one. 
No, no es la estación de Cienta. Es multinacional. Sí. Bueno. Y europeo. I don't have the right place. So commercial communications, geostationary, okay, 12 degrees west. Okay, so, so zero, I know I'm from UK and zero goes over UK, and then 12 degrees west is to the west towards North America, a tiny, tiny bit. So if you find, only don't go, only so you have to look at what's on the equator, underneath us, pretty much. It is, yeah, and just go to 30, yeah, almost 36,000 kilometers away. So if you just go and stand there, thank you very much. It's, um, Probably TV programs, but very important ones. <laughs> so, Atlantic bird. Okay. Donde esta el equator? So you have to get ready to jump. To jump? Yeah. But no, 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 no. No, you're not here yet. Wait, wait, wait. Espera. 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 Okay, so this... So where's Nort? Where's Nort? Okay, so this is... You're about here, here, here. You're about there. Yeah, so next time, but you have to move. You've got to move, you've got to move. So next time... Take the transmissions. Lock it. Okay, so have you got it? So next time you appear, you have to jump on. And you, you know your orbit. You go into orbit. have to figure it out. You figure out your orbit and jump on and do whatever ISS is. Direct to home, voice, video, and data transmission. He's the only one who can do it. Come on! Be a satellite. See, you sit there with your computers and you're like, we can do this, we can do this. But then when it comes to the real thing, can you be a satellite? <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. I'm just flying. Orbital scientist launched from Baikonur, North America Caribbean.
Hola, hola. Hola, somos the girls. <laughs> We see as through a glass darkly, Paul says in 1 Corinthians, will this someday be rewritten as we see us into a scanner darkly, a scanner which is watching us all the time, our TV tube watching back at us as we watch it, as amused or bored or anyhow somewhat as entertained by what we do as we are by what we see on its implacable face. Nauka 00, la nueva versión de satélite con tecnología de nueva generación, con elementos de inteligencia artificial que permitirán optimizar la estrategia y eficacia de los sistemas de seguridad. Recogerá datos previamente inaccesibles para el cuerpo de defensa de la ONU. Nauka 00, a cutting edge satellite with new generation technology based on artificial intelligence that will make it possible to optimize the strategic reach and efficacy of security systems and collect data previously inaccessible to the UN Defense Corps. I believe in the <laughs> power of the imagination. New York Times, December 15, 2011. An uncontrollable satellite drifting in orbit did not shut itself down as predicted and is posing signal interference risks to other satellites, experts say. The UN's Nauka 00 military satellite, dubbed the dissident satellite, lost contact with its controllers in April but is stuck on. It has stopped transmitting citizen data and has started bouncing very low frequency signals in a twist that has left scientists dumbfounded. The consequences are unknown. I believe in the power of the imagination to remake the world, to release the truth within us, to hold back the night, to transcend death, to charm motorways, to ingratiate ourselves with birds, to enlist the confidences of madmen. Creo en la locura, en la verdad de lo inexplicable, en el sentido común de las piedras, en la demencia de las flores, en la enfermedad reservada para la raza humana por los astronautas del Apolo. Creo en la imposibilidad de la existencia, en el humor de las montañas, en lo absurdo del electromagnetismo, en la farsa de la geometría, en la crueldad de la aritmética en las intenciones asesinas de la lógica. I believe in flight, in the beauty of the wing and in the beauty of everything that has ever flown, in the stone thrown by a small child that carries with it the wisdom of statesmen and midwives. Creo en la no existencia del pasado, en la muerte del futuro y en las infinitas posibilidades del presente. I have thing, seen things you people wouldn't believe. Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I watch sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate. All those moments will be lost in time, like tears in the rain. 1894. During an auroral display in the month of March, British observers connected telephone reservists to telegraph lines and were able to hear twigs and possible whistles and chorus. 1919, you can hear the grenades fly. Barkhausen suggested that these strange sounds might correlate with meteorological disturbances. Despite extensive testing, he was never able to reproduce the phenomenon in the laboratory. He finally concluded that the sounds were of unknown origin. By the 70s, there was an explosion of research into space weather and the related natural radio signals. As being able to understand, the phenomena was essential to keep the growing number of satellites in healthy condition. 1990s, the internet, the arrival and growth of the internet facilitated the exchange of information between natural radio hobbies and eventually made real-time solar and geometric information available to everyone. 2011, as an offshoot of the Orbitando Satellites Workshop, 
Astrocamp was great in Impulse, Asturias, a gathering to observe natural radio phenomena. 2012, Astrocamp detects signals from the dissident military satellite Nauka 00, which has gone rogue and started emitting love signals. Claro, claro. Bueno, tal vez tendremos que cantarlo todos juntos, ¿no? Ok, todo el mundo juntos. Uno, dos. Satellite of love. Come on, man. I'll get. I do the pam pam pam. Satellite of love. Satellite of love. Orbitando satellites. Versión uno. Aquí estamos. Si puede hacer un paneo de la cámara, por favor, uh, Josianito. Un último paneo de la cámara, que nos vemos ahí todos aquí. Ha sido un placer, Peña. Hasta la próxima. Satellite of Love. Yo.